the alternative dig talk real issues real talk Beautiful people, you're welcome to the Snap Talk with your girl Teddy Tanger every Saturday, right from 6 to 7. I'm going to go to flat. I'm going to go to the body shaming. Speak up. I'm going to go to the front. I'm going to go to the front. I'm going to go to the front. I'm going to go to the alternative dig talk. I'm going to go to the front. I'm going to go to the front. I'm going to go to the Is it about family? I'm going to go to the front. I'm going to go to the front. Aye, dia agaknya aku nanya apa yang aku yang dia ni aku mahu kira aku mahu buat aku. Naga mama we balik pun zala. Is it outside family? Is it society? Oh, could it be relationship? Come and visit, call me. It's my younger. I miss you, bichi bichi. Especially in game, in better yoga scene. Neno muda kwa gali damu season ni abata kwa gali zinukubo lida. Just be commenting atu pikiona jana gade togele kuto jaka tu jogele kwa nuko. The alternative dig talk ku share a nganzi the snap talk. Are you craving for that special meal that will entice your taste buds and leave you with lasting thrilling memories? Look no further. Spice Island Bolenga has got your answer. Nature fresh and delicious juice, the best meals. Don't miss our daily specials from Monday to Sunday. Pizza Wednesday, Saturday Pizza Bonanza, you buy one and take two. Come dine with us and feel the experience. We are located at Prime Shopping Center in Bulenga, Mitiana Road. For inquiries, call us on 07-04-11-1720. Spice Island, we treat your cravings. Looking for a pair of shoes? Let's Up Stores has a wide range of selection for unisex footwear. We have the best quality of all brands at pocket-friendly prices and we make deliveries countrywide. Just plus your order or reach us on 0772-080090. You can also check up at Let's Up Stores on all our social media platforms. Let's Up, craft your own footprints. Alternative Dig Talk. Real issues. Real talk. A very good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I welcome you to today's edition of the Hotline Show. My name is Roger Studiawe. It's a great honor yet again to be in this space to be to talk about a number of issues that have happened around the country, really, in our communities where we live. And as usual, I have come with uh, our honorable guest of the day, our usual panelist, uh, Mr. Uh, Joseph Ocheno. He's a senior citizen here, and he's a ve I, I, don't, I don't know if I should call him a veteran in political affairs. He has at least been around. He has seen uh, quite a number of go uh, you know, yeah. governments. I think that is fair. But he has also lived in more than Uganda, so he has sort of traveled enough to understand how things do and how things work, how governments work for their people and how people, you know, communities need to be run, how governments need to be run, what he, he has the experience to understand and identify that a particular issue is not going how it should be. And this is this and that is what we can do to make it better. So we have him today. He's going to be talking to us, of course, sharing his wisdom with us on a number of issues and just to highlight a few of them we're going to look about at um seven's letter his brief about the by-elections two weeks ago that happened in wokedia you know that it went around the news about the violence that was mad, was in the whole process and so he did give a brief so we want to sort of interrogate what that means and and if it does make a difference because uh, election violence has been happening in uganda since time in moria and he did highlight in his letter that he does not want the country to slip back in the chaos of the 1980 <laughs> Mwanga elections. Now, Mwanga, <laughs> that was UPC, and our guest today comes from the UPC. So he will try to sort of draw a line in that perspective. We'll also look at uh, the terror alerts that have happened. You'll know that UK, the UK has recently issued terror alerts in Uganda and advised uh, its citizens to be on alert to some places to not go or some what time to be in which place. And we have had, I think, about last, was it last month or so, 
we had also the US issue the same kind of stuff. What does that mean? What does it cost Uganda? Those letters, those briefs, do they cost us? I think, as a, especially a country that is called the Pearl of Africa, we think that we get a number of things from tourism. So if those terror alerts come through, don't we lose some of the things? Does it our country lose in that regard? So we want to look at that. We want to look at the retirement of uh, uh, Kehoda. Uh, you know that he's a former IGP of the Uganda police. Uh, but of course, with the issues he has been battling with in court, I'll read to you about some of the cases that the charges that was put against him. Uh, we do not know what happened. Of course, you had the people around 2021 elections in Chisoro plead, uh, pleading with the president to forgive their son and redeploy him. So we do not know what circumstances led to now the retirement. Does that mean that he has been forgiven of his sins, as some people want to quote it? And of course, we we'll look at the Mao Grand <laughs> homecoming. What, what, what does that mean? Does it, is it a way to broker relationships, relationship with his party, the DP? And, and a number of those things is what you should expect. So I'm going to uh, just ask him the thing, I think the current thing that is happening in, in, in the UPC, we have the Oyamba elections. You remember the, uh, the army man who was <coughs> shot by his bodyguard, uh, I think earlier last month. Uh, that gentleman, was it Charles, Charles Ngola, I think, that was his name. He was coming from Oyama, and so now they are doing a by-election to get a replacement for him. And the UPC has a person running, and the NRM also has a person running. So I want him to just highlight to us, how are you ready for this by-election in Oyama? No, thank you very much for having me. <coughs> it's always a pleasure to be here. Yes, um, I am delighted to say that uh, um, I get some very good feedbacks mm. about this program. Yes. I get feed good feedback about the, uh, the station, DigiTalk, mm. uh, and I get fantastic feedback about uh, the young presenter with whom uh, uh, I spent time, all, all your colleagues, but uh, so you guys do a good job here. But also it's the case that I say to this program when I first, uh, you first hosted me, I didn't know very much, although I'd known about some of your colleagues and some of the work mm -hmm. that you're doing. Mm -hmm. It is the case that um, 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 we could do better as a country mm -hmm. to know networks like yours that they exist uh, and, 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 and how best to access yourselves because you, you, you discuss pertinent issues. But also, we could do better and more um, if all of us engaged on, yes. on these spaces and then found opportunities um, through which we were able to respond to, to some of the bigger national challenges. Because at the end of the day, in my own opinion, I, I believe that uh, um, uh, this country is not about today. Uh, this country was about our founding parents. Yes. I'm proud that uh, the core at uh, the foundation of this country was by Uganda People's Congress, and we did excellent work. Uh, but we are humans, and we also had our own challenges. Mm. Um, today, um, we are reviewing 40 years of NRA, but that still is not this country. Mm. Uh, this country is really about the future, and it's your generation and younger. Um, it's the young girl I met at, uh, I must say young woman because she's over 21, but you know, close to that age, mm. um, whom I met in a restaurant serving me and uh, with whom I had a conversation and turns out that she'd ended up working there because um, um, she had dropped out mm. of a course for, uh, I think she said plumbing. But she decided to do a plumbing course, quite impressive for young women. These are some of the prejudicial spaces which people would always thought were yeah, confined for men. Yeah. But she told me she had wanted to be an engineer. Uh, she's one of five in her family. She's the second born. Her father struggles with, with alcohol, some in rural part of Western Uganda. The mother is from here at the center. Um, she now has to struggle to help the mother with some of her, her siblings. But of import, this young lady uh, got 23 points for her O-level, and she could not go to A-level uh, because of school fees. Uh, and this young, beautiful lady, uh, very committed, uh, decided to go and branch off. Um, 
branching off in that event that she couldn't do. She's now ended up working in a restaurant where she possibly earns 200,000 shillings or thereabout in, 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 in a month. Yeah. Um, she told me she still has hope uh, be, to become an engineer. And I went blank, how do I, how can I help this young lady? I this time took her number. It, it is those that I struggle with, but it's also those plus you who are the future, and that is what this country is all about. So this country is very much about our future. Mm. I get worried, therefore, that um, we are living through experiments, you know, uh, about our future. So in that said, <laughs> just to to clarify um, into the main aspect of the conversation. So those are food for thought, yeah. the introductory thing. Um, um, Paul Muanga was chairperson of the military commission. Mm. Mr. Museveni was Mr. Muanga's uh, deputy. Did you know that? Mm. The military commission that oversaw the election of 1980 that Mr. Museveni refers to. Mm. Um, the chairman was Paul Mwanga. Mm, yes. Uh, the Mr. Museveni was the vice chairman. Oh. Yes. Uh, Mr. Museveni and Mr. Mwanga uh, had been in this country from about April. I know, I know Museveni did not come on April the 11th when Oito Jok announced the collapse of Idi Amin. Mm. Museveni was touring, as I told you before. So he came to Kampala at some stage in April, I hope. <laughs> it was starting to be corrected, mm. of 1979. Obote was not in town. Obote, who was the commander of the overall operations, all those other things, was in Tanzania. Obote returned 18, nearly 18, yeah, 15 months later, mm. May the following year. So these guys came, and um, we had Lule, we had Binaisa, and then we had a commission and a collective presidency. That's a much more legal, technical, technical question, because there was a, a collective presidency that really governed the country, but the military commission was sort of the powerhouse of yeah. this operation. Yeah. My point here is the 1980 general election was not conducted by UPC. Mwanga happened to have been UPC. Yeah. Uh, I'm delighted to say uh, I will claim him, uh, including tomorrow, as UPC, <laughs> very proudly, <laughs> and claim his family and his uh, from the ch uh, children's children. Mr. Museveni was the vice chairman of the commission. So Mr. Museveni should partake responsibility what happened in 1980, as, leading as to the election, as a vice chairman of the commission. Of the commission. Mm. So this thing about pointing fingers, one individual, neither here nor there. But that said, even if Museveni and now <laughs> goes next to Mwanga's grave and say, me and my, 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 my chairman, we take responsibility. Mm. I've said there is no evidence that 1980 general elections was rigged. I was extremely surprised to see in Mr. Museveni's letter daring. And in a way, Mr. Museveni, I think, is possibly responding to some of us because he knows we've been raising these issues. Mm -hmm. And the people like you are now catching up with him, beginning to ask him, but Mr. Museveni, show us. So instead of doing what Tafire said, that look, we, we just claimed that going to the bush because of elections, because we basically wanted to go to the bush. <laughs> Mr. Museveni has to say that, look, uh, we, we, you know, one of the reasons why. So th that was a huge error. He should not have really referred to it. He could even have said that, oh, you know, we had issues with elections in the past. And to be fair, Ugandans every other time have given Mr. Museveni a huge amount of opportunity uh, uh, to, to get things right on the basis of the historical errors, whatever those errors were. And in, in, in the sense also looking at in the past, we had disputes, whatever they are. Yeah. Let's not go there. Let's do things better. Hence, some of the makers of the 1995 NRA constitution that I don't agree with, many of them, colleagues, they will tell you very convincingly that they really wanted to move the country forward. So, just to, so, to, so quite clearly, 1980 general elections, UPC was not a party to the election processes. UPC was a, was a player like DP. UPC was a player like UPM, Mr. Museveni's party, that was lucky got one seat. CP did not get a seat. Four political parties participated. UPC won those elections convincingly. And that is what annoyed Museveni so much that he's not come to terms with the lo that loss. No wonder. Why, 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 okay, sorry for cutting you short. Just sure. a little bit of highlight. Mm. Why, why do you think that every, now him having been a deputy to the commission, yes, yes, yes. he does blame all of it on the, on, on the UPC government? That you, you know, th that's right. That, that's why programs like this are very important. Mm. And you've asked about, you've mentioned about some of my experiences. I'm very lucky, and I thank you very much for being that generous. Yes, I'm lucky enough that in 1980, 
Uh, I just about managed to vote, mm. in, uh, just around age. I'm also then also very lucky that I saw a means regime. I remember very mildly about one government because I was young, mm. but I remember the beauties. <laughs> and then I saw a mean. I saw all the interim administrations from uh, the Lule, Muanga, Military Commission, uh, uh, Obote to, and then Museveni. Mm. I had my own taste of Mr. Museveni's own niceness by his soldiers and some dubious guys coming to arrest me at Makere University, you know. You know? Yeah. So I have received, I've been arrested by NRA, I've been tortured by NRA, I've experienced some of the NRA's safe, safe houses, and I've been exiled. And I've gone through, so I've gone through all the things about Uganda on a day-to-day -day basis, and I've seen what concentration camps and many of these things are. But one of the things that it helped me to is also to experience East Africa, yeah. uh, to experience Africa. But most importantly, in the course of my being outside the country, I have seen how elections are conducted. Mm. I've seen how governments are governed. I have been very lucky. I joined a, a sister party to the Uganda People's Congress, the British Labour Party, and I grew in that party. Mm. I saw how um, to campaign locally in Sekiseni, or campaign locally in Kololo, how to message, and then, you know, I saw how it is to persuade. Uh, and I did. And I, I joined, I became an official, I became a branch chairman, a branch secretary. I grew in the party and nearly went to parliament, except I refused to do so. I have advised governments, one or two. Mm. I have lobbied. So I have followed closely elections across the continent and elsewhere in the world. I have said variously that uh, I participated in a number of elections where you go to a polling center and you find people waiting and people almost being persuaded to come and cast their ballot papers. Mm -hmm. I have seen how people uh, close ballot boxes at a, a local place, if it's maybe in a Centenary Park, mm -hmm. and you see officials, some of whom are even getting bored because it's, the sun is shining, shining and people are not there. <laughs> They're waiting for the next person to tick. And I've not seen a police officer. And I have seen these things sealed and they are taken to the local court. Usually, the, the, most of the votes are counted at the local uh, government centers, meaning normal district, head, district headquarters. Quarters, yes. You know, um, and these things are done. And in many cases, I don't know. I don't remember how many times I heard that there is one dispute over parliamentary constituency. And people leading to those elections. This is important. I have seen political parties campaigned, mm -hmm. campaign. Mm -hmm. I have seen how um, in a country like Uganda's equivalent, you'd see DP, UPC, uh, ANT, NUP, and Mr. Museveni, five candidates, being given equal times on the television channel. Mm. But most importantly, compulsorily, uh, the national channel, in which case um, uh, Uganda television, these days they've given it a name, UPC, to make it posh, <laughs> you know, <laughs> or urban television, which is also part, yes. partly part of what, of what we yeah. own yeah. as Ugandans, yeah. okay? That strictly UBC would have to give equal times. And by the way, you don't have, ANT does not have to wait to complain. You know, the Communications Commission would be watching and the editors would be watching. And the editors does not matter even if they belong to NRA, the, you know, whatever. Mm. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. So I've seen that. I have seen that, and that happens today. And I ask myself, I've seen these things. I've experienced it. I come down to NTB. I come to Kampala, and I miss my country, and I lobby, and I campaign for my country. And why do I not go to Nagongara and I find something funny? And we clap in Kampala saying, oh, no to appetite, because we say we are Africans and the same citizens mm. like everybody else. Mm. So surely it's a contradiction, because if I cannot be treated the same way in Agongera as in Kampala, by my own government, you know? Maybe the Bazungu, the, the, the clear shorts who come in to loot our money here <laughs> using no. dubious programs, they're doing it because they know that we're substandard citizens. Yeah, man, that's my point. So these electoral things and some of my experiences, those are things that drive me, you know? I have gone to television stations and I've seen the courtesy of television presenters mm. around the world, mm. global networks, and I've been lucky. I have seen how producers work. 
I have seen what a green room water is. I have seen how you're guided as a guest if you're not a very experienced guest. Mm. I have seen, I've gone to party conferences. I have been chosen to speak. I was very privileged to speak at the Labour Party's Centenary Conference in 1999 as a delegate from my constituency. Mm. Fantastic, first time, privileged. You know, that was the peak of Blair, that was the peak of Clinton, mm. that was the peak of Mandela, and these guys were there. It's a privilege. But you've also gone down there and see how these guys organize their things. By the way, in that conference was when I met uh, my then former vice chancellor, Professor George Keary, who is now Museveni's High Commissioner to London. And I actually teased him um, the afternoon leading to the, um, um, the leader's speech, which is now most listened to, people queue up quite much. And we with him, in the, and I just told him, George, you know, now you're queuing up coming to, to attend a party conference here, <laughs> you know? Mm -hmm. But in Uganda, parties are banned, because 1999, parties were still yeah, banned. And he, talking, and he was quite embarrassed. You know, so I've seen all that, but why I'm, why I'm taking you, it's a bit of a deviation, but it's important, mm. um, is preparation for that party conference. These are things for my books and maybe for another training session, but let me just give it free for this program. You know, you go to a training room, um, so you see political organization, I'm, t I'm giving you free advice. You go to training rooms and they guide you if you've been selected to ask a question at the next session. What to do, how you're guided, how you check to make sure that you, whatever you're going to ask does not past many minutes. So that's good for television. Mm -hmm. So sometimes some of those things that we see, as you know, you and me here, is an end product. Mm -hmm. But so sometimes some of the things in between are not necessarily particularly nice. Yeah. But these guys do this. So I'm saying, these guys make all this effort for their countries. They make these efforts for their political parties. They make these efforts for their citizens. Their citizens are accountable. It's not surprising that they control and rule the world. Now, these guys do that. I experienced this in London. I make a net contribution to this in London. I make a net contribution to education in the UK. I make a net contribution to local government in the UK. I make a net contribution to policy in the UK. I make a net contribution at my desk, you know, to support and to advise a member of parliament to, and to support and to advise a minister. I make a net contribution by make, raising an issue and you go in and you see the prime minister responds to it. To it. Yeah possibly indirectly, in particular very, ways. Very the time of the Somali, I mean, the, 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 the Sierra Leonean conflict, I believe I'm a net contributor to British response to those. So you see all these things happen normally in democracy. Why come here and find a bunch of people who imposed themselves 40 years ago, they make mistakes and then they want to treat you as a little kid? How? And in other words, they're not willing to acknowledge even that they're making mistakes, and they're not showing a possibility of giving opportunities for young citizens of this country to have this country for themselves, including even with their children. Because the irony is, some of these guys are so funny. They've siphoned everything. They've looted so much. And many of them came from nothing. That's again another thing. Mm. For me, I grew up in this country. I was born and grew up in this country. So I know what my own <laughs> limits and limitations were. were. As I was growing up. But I also knew what some other people were. So, <laughs> so some, you, you are a nobody. You come out here, we simply say, okay, let's share where we are, then move forward together. I sort of, I'm sorry, maybe I'm deviating a bit. No, that's so that's okay. a bit of part of my, 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 so some of those things, you know, uh, are hard. We helped Rwanda. You know, we helped Zimbabwe. You know, I mean, overthrow our government because of Zimbabwe and South Africa. The British did, Anglo-America did, you know? And then I have gone to Zimbabwe and I've gone to South Africa. And you see how these people are trying to, of course I'm not saying they're perfect, to turn around their thing. I said, for those of us who were in the, as early as the early 60s were committed to do these things for our country and our continent, we've done this. 40 years on, on why are we here? I, I, maybe I want to continue boring you guys. I spent more than an hour and a half just merely here in the industrial area to have at the studios. Today I was not as much annoyed, partly I left a bit of time, but partly you know, I need to make sure that I have my faculties tomorrow mm. to keep going. So um, so those, uh, those experiences I've had from elsewhere, I, I can tell you they're fantastically good. And I'm sharing it with, with the fellow citizens. So I, as I said, I've gone to work and I have known that I, I have to, to clock in those days even before these machines, that I need to arrive on the minute. And that if duty, I'm the duty officer for, for that day, 
I have to open the office. I have to be ready before the opening time. Yes. You know, and I have to close on time. And I've got to respond to letters, correspondence, complaints, you know, within particular five working days, in fact, local government that feature worked. And I've seen people being sanctioned. And you've seen somebody um, taking responsibility for the mistakes they've made. I've seen the head of an organization coming and apologizing to junior staff. And I'm saying, these things are possible. In part, they happen in our country. Why cannot it happen today? Is, so, do, do you, from the experience you've had, mm -hmm. and all of these governments, you've worked in, you, you, I mean, you have a rich experience in these things. Would you, what do you think is the cause? Is it because, as Africans, we do not have the experience to deal with them? Or is it just a deliberate effort? Or we don't take just as much initiative to feel like we need to get to a better place and so we work towards achieving that? It's not experience. It's leadership. Young man, it's leadership. That's why I told you uh, that it happened in this country. At independence, ironically, and Uganda is ra ra rather, rather unique, mm. um, Milton Obote did not attend a European university or an American university, but he was our first prime minister. Uh, he had even been checked, so he didn't even put on the gown for the graduation thing. Mm. Um, but this guy's together with the other leaders from other political parties, meaning this guy's managed to deliver the best government in this country within a, six, a period of six years, eight years granted. Mm. But by 1965, there's some of these things that I was seeing the other day opening hospital in Bundibujo and the Prime Minister is talking about the great thing they've done in six years. Opening a hospital in, in West Nile, opening the, the, the Pakwach Bridge in, I think, July or June 1966. And so where did these guys get this? They had no some. They didn't have the experience I have, by the way. Obiodebere <laughs> did not have the experience yeah, I have. Yeah, yeah. No, did he have the information all of us have today? Meaning, yeah. the, so much I have today. I've attended global universities around the world. I've spoken to various universities. I don't even know how many universities did speak. But the guys knew. They opened up schools. The gender thing, which is now the cool thing, as I said. I, I, people, I keep talking about these things sometimes, maybe sometimes even I feel that maybe uh, people might think which gender is come, you know, over, over UPC make, but no, these are the facts. In 1962, you come to power, but you know that girl children in 1962, not today, 2020, I'm just talking, telling about a girl who's stranded here in Kampala mm. and she passed her all level, you know, and by the way, that girl did not know that a level, a level, was a, free back no, not only that, A level education was free. Mm. She didn't know that university education was free or technical education was free. She didn't know that actually, she, you know, after all level, P, and after A level, if she decides to go to technical education, teacher training or uh, or nursing, any of, this, any of the tertiary institutions, even after all level, were free. You know, so I'm saying these guys did these things 60 years ago. Surely, for heaven's sake, it's now 60 plus one. Why can't we do it? So no, it's leadership. It's leadership of saying that, that's why I'm saying that Mr. Museveni needs to do a favor to, you know, if we, if we allow us to call it a favor. Let me actually spare this for him because it's not a favor. Mm -hmm. He just needs to do the right thing and say, I have tried for 40 years. I've done after, my best. After he boss that he started organizing in 1966, some of which is the part of a lie, you know, that he went to the king of Ankole <laughs> and told, told them uh, why he has not restored the kingdom of Ankole and the one in Kigezi, but is busy giving other, other, other families and, and sub-counties, kings, kingdoms, I don't know. But it's neither here nor there. So since he's been around this thing for the last 60 years, he said, look, you guys, I've tried my level best. These ideas are not monolithic. You know, you know rather, yeah, we don't have monopoly of, of, of all these things. And by the way, again, some of those experiences, just to emphasize this, what I tested was actually that, you see, political parties get tired in government. And political leaders, and as I said, I've been lucky to be at the heart of these guys. And you have a conversation like this, and someone tells Joseph, you know what, I think we're tired. I think we need to lose the next election, something like that. Or maybe, no, I think public opinion, is, I think we're going to lose the next election. Mm -hmm. Maybe you guys, you know, when we go into opposition, maybe that's when we're going to wake up to begin to review. Now, that review gives you opportunity to say, where did we go wrong? Perhaps when uh, we introduced uh, a bit of the market in the health services, um, we did not have sufficient regulator f regulatory framework. Mm -hmm. So we allowed too much of the market to go into health services. Mm -hmm. So it has impacted negatively. 
on the people. Meaning, you may not have intent, you may, have in, may not have intent, but you can even use that even if you intended to, to, to marketize the whole thing. You, but you can use that as an excuse. You guys, I think we got this wrong. Yeah. So maybe next other time we need to do it in a different other way. Um, maybe uh, we, like President Hechelema is talking about it during this debt relief, uh, 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 okay, debt, re yeah, debt relief uh, um, um, <coughs> repayment program they had with the, with the, with the international well, community how he was talking and saying that, look, he acknowledges that, yes, while you guys need to be very reasonable with us in, in terms of um, the, these dates and loans okay. and things like that, uh, um, uh, and the repayment process, and we thank you, we also need to recognize that when we borrow, we should use these monies constructively. constructively, but also in terms of disbursement for, for projects, we should do these projects quicker. It was very common sense. I don't think the rest of the world are following this. I hope uh, uh, some advisors to governments are listening. Hmm. Uh, because it was a very important point, because part of the money is that you get one billion shillings, one billion dollars for uh, doing a, 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 a road in Nigeria, and every other day the tractors are going like this, like this, like this, like this, you know? And you think you're playing it from your grandfather's pocket money. You know, no, it's public money, and it's not even public money, it's borrowed money. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> so yeah, every day the money yeah. is earning an interest against you. So, leadership. So, this country needs a fresh set of ideas. One, as a massive of leadership, and two, politically. Uh, I think politically, we need to taste, other than the 10th program of PDM after Bonawa, whatever, mm. we need another political organization to come that uh, even if they say it's not cooperatives of UPC, if they're shy, in case that government's not UPC, mm -hmm. we need to try and do this thing somewhere in a different way. So that is how nations work. And you do it in such a manner that um, you recognize uh, Rogers was in government, they bungled it, and the public have beaten them by them losing election. Mm -hmm. You don't which hunt them, the public have already humiliated them. Rogers tomorrow will come and meet you as a channel, and you have to handle business as usual. Yeah. I think we need to be able to do that. So, um, so no, it's um, it's leadership, and the most important, as I said, is policy, meaning ideology, ideology, absence of uh, political ideology in political parties and organisations. But as I said, many of these parties have not grown. I don't want to again talk about it too much today. For us at UPC, we are lucky. We are rounded. We have an idea. We have <laughs> we've got the experience, and I can tell you, very, very, we are very, very ready thinking in terms of what we could do as a post, post mm. it's up to others to be able to do that. So that basically that's what is needed really. And maybe finally, um, whenever I've visited other countries and been in some other countries, I wonder, these leaders of ours, including these ones who go and get humiliated you know, uh, when they're seeking medical treatments in London, from, you know, in private health facilities in London, most of it is public money anyway, don't they feel embarrassed and come home and say, look, you know, <laughs> from today in Barumos, he had, Barumos was, he was a good guy. You know, you know, you know this person that, look, no, I, I, we've learned our lessons. We want to go to UPC, they told you. Now, next time in Katuna, we're going to build a hospital, just like he told you for UPC. And the Katuna one, so when somebody's coming from uh, uh, maybe, you know, uh, Rwanda, Rwanda Chigari for a weekend, and then maybe the lady wants to give bath, things like that, they go down. It's just those things. You, you do you do highlight a number of things, and you do talk about um, taking uh, uh, or taking responsibility of own and owning mistakes when you have mm -hmm. had, had done them. And and now I want to relate that to 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 go to one of the issues of the day mm -hmm. about the current uh, by elections that happened in Bukavia. Mm -hmm. Mm. And I want to read the letter that the president wrote, just so I do not quote anything the whole letter. out of context. Just you, so you don't want to annoy the, the old uh, man with the hat. No, not, not, <laughs> not, not, uh, not annoy. There are, there are people who may not have not seen it. it. Yeah, sure. yeah, yeah, just to yeah, get a whole idea. So he, he did write a brief yes. uh, to the uh, Brigadier General Henry Isoke, who is, the, I think, the head of the State House Anti-Corruption Unit. And he said, it's, it's a brief about a Bukedia district chairperson by election held on 14th June of 2023. And he said, I've gotten some disturbing information about the recent by-election in Wukedia, where our NRM candidate won by 91%, and the voter turn-up was 87%. You know how ironic that is. This time, yeah. I was, of course, happy for my party to perform so well. However, I am getting information that government officials on the night of the nomination invited the house of Mr. Omago, who is 
that was the gentleman from uh, that was terribly beaten yeah. yes was terribly beaten yes confiscated his academic papers and stole his money for nomination i think the nomination was the following day yeah. now um, the ec had to extend the nomination days when he when he appealed even then when he went for nomination he was attacked at the gate of the ec come election morning government officials invaded the polling stations government officials hmm. invaded the polling stations and voted on behalf of the voters hmm. this sounds like a film that's a letter of the it president. It is a, a film, Henry. That's it's what a, we've been living letter, in this country. That's yeah. a letter of the president. It says, this sounds like a film. Yeah. However, I want to be sure that Uganda does not go back to the crime of 1980 with Muanga elections that forced us to go to the bush. That was an insult to his boss. Muanga was his boss, and it was an insult to <laughs> yes. his boss. Therefore, mm. investigate these claims, and if any criminality was committed, take action and report back. Such actions are not only electoral offenses, they are also criminal. Mm. I am therefore directing you to handle the criminals. Now, when you look at this letter, and, and of course, uh, looking at the... First of all, do you think this is part of taking a, a responsibility for m making mistakes? No, it's a movie. It's Mr. Museveni's <laughs> next phase of a movie. <laughs> because first, um, <coughs> I, I put the disclaimer on Mwanga. Mwanga was Mr. Museveni's boss. boss yes. and, uh, and apparently in normal life, Museveni both feared and respected Mwanga. See, I'm giving you guys information. Mm. And uh, that cannot be challenged. We'll learn a new thing. Yeah, so, um, but uh, that's neither here nor there. Mm. It's also unfortunate that Mr. Mwanga um, uh, died uh, in prison in Luzira. And that is how much we've lost people unnecessarily in this country. Mm. Um, but for us in UPC, we forgive and we're forgiven, and we continue. We need to continue forgiving at every stage. Mm. Um, what, however, is interesting is immediately the president of the republic recognizes that a crime has been committed. Um, that is a matter for the police. That's not a matter for state house official. So Mr. Museveni needed... Uh, under a, a clear system. Yes, yes. Way. Mr. Museveni needed to have, uh, uh, if he's raising these things, get structural advice from his people. It's interesting, he does not tell us whether uh, he spoke to my good sister, Anita, Ako. Anita Moon, oh, Amun, yeah. because, uh, oh, that, Bukele, because that is um, um, Anita's constituency. Mm. And um, just as a matter of what do you know what's going on, what went on? So, I, I don't know. So, I'm just giving you some, some food for thought. Mm. But finally, um, it should be, have been a matter for the police. You should have called my brother, uh, the Inspector General of Police, uh, Mr. Okotho Chol. Mm. That's his job. <laughs> so, the police matter rather than uh, uh, anti corruption. Number two, ministers, ministers involved, responsible, are the Minister for the Police and Minister for. For, for, for law and order, which is basically justice and, 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 and interior. Um, th th those are the respective uh, ministry, ministries responsible. Uh, responsible for this. Mm. And um, so there, and, and, and say in this case, the Electoral Commission under my good uh, brother, Simon Bebakama. Mm. You know, so what happened? So, see, this is a minus, interesting smoke screen. But that, that procedure, that's what it should have done. But number two, it is actually shocking that Mr. Museven does not know that um, uh, these uh, electoral offenses and worse have been happening in the country since he came to power. Mm -hmm. Starting with Paul Semogere's or 1996. In 1996, uh, we supported Paul Semogere. The parties were still banned. Th that was a DP. A D DP, yes. But it was the uh, parties were banned, so Semogere stood as an individual and then came under some kind of loose arrangement. Mm -hmm. I, I had my own views. Polling stations emerged out of Kampala from nowhere. There are nearly 100 <laughs> polling stations artificially, 1996, and Museveni's talk about 1980 of Mwanga, Museveni. You are an interesting guy. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Then come Kiza Besiji's thing. And then come on and on and on. So these things have been routine. But Mr. Museveni should have said instead that, look, you know, you guys, um, this thing happened in Bukedia. We need to review our position. So he could still have written a letter you know, but to appropriate people, handled in a slightly different way, but reformalizing and remainstreaming the system and taking broader cognizance of the electoral offenses 
across the country. I've been rigged twice. I cannot even go to some of those details, mm -hmm. you know, for, for parliamentary elections. Mm -hmm. We've, uh, what happened in Soroti, for example. Mm, yeah. By the that Bukedia, when I was in Bukedia myself, you know, I was preparing to go and campaign for the young man, fantastic young man for the UPC, uh, 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 um, LC5. I've said, including this program of years, that to consider that merely LC5, people take these extreme measures. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tells you... And this was LC5 too? Merely, no, I'm saying this was merely LC5. Mm. It's not even a parliamentary seat. Now, even if it's a parliamentary seat, you've got a majority, by force, moreover, of over 400. <laughs> and you're still beating people by force. I just can't understand what the message is. So maybe in this case, he realizes that some of these guys were overzealous on his behalf. They are really on his behalf. But maybe he's trying to target a few individuals in his own regime, having managed to, 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 to fight the Mabati thing. Maybe. But quite clearly, um, um, there's a young by-election taking place this week. Um, maybe he wants to, to do it and make sure that uh, you know, we, the, the UPC candidate uh, um, um, secures her appropriate victory. Uh, I spoke to the UPC candidate who was a candidate at the last election, mm. uh, and she, plus many other people, believed that UPC won by a North, or Yam North uh, election at that time. But thanks to the power of Angola and the military and the power of NRA and money, that um, they find it was fairly close. So if uh, Mr. Museven goes shy, you know, he may even want to reward his, what he calls him, his girls, the better Mongis, and show us in UPC in the North that once in a while, you it's okay. Their yeah, so he can talk to his, his funny guys <laughs> so that uh, they allow the will of the people in Oyam North uh, mm -hmm. to prevail mm -hmm. so that uh, a decent young doctor appeal uh, 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 goes through as, 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 as a UP member, UPC member of parliament for Oyam. After all, that is, those are fundamental, <coughs> those are UPC strongholds. Uh, anyway, and then Mr. Museven, even if we, we win no Yam North, you know, uh, your regime will not collapse. You know, I'm told people I like... Buy, buy one seat. Yeah, I'm told seat. people like Beta Mongi are dancing. I know one or two of my colleagues, I don't want to give them too much uh, 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 media space today, you know, we're singing and dancing your clothes. Mm. It's neither here nor there. So that's sort of really what I can say. But uh, let's see what happens in, in, in Oyam. But um, Mr. Museveni should be apologizing beyond, uh, beyond Bukedia. He should be apologizing over Soroti, apologizing over Rua, apologizing over Bu Bu Busia, and many of the other by-elections that took place. But finally, at the elections in which he was nominated, um, my good brother, um, um, Patrick Amorian, uh, got nominated barefoot. As <laughs> good know, as, yes. as if, uh, as if he was a, <laughs> as if he was a hardest man of the sixties. You know, <laughs> you know, barefoot. And, you know, and and Museveni didn't say anything, yeah. and nobody was held responsible. Nobody was held accountable. But finally, again, linked to this, the UPC candidate at Bukedi by election also was not nominated. He was detained for two days, and Mr. Museveni take this on. He was detained for two days. Um, he was allegedly, it was claimed that uh, he was a civil servant mm. because apparently he's an, a, a, a parish chief. And so he had uh, this guy's electoral material. So if then that was technically the offense that this guy, merely parish chief, was holding the material, not campaigning, but holding the material of this guy, um, and then you have what he himself has conceded government officials did yeah, whatever yeah, they did, being a part of this. then he should instruct that we nullify the. The, the, the elections, the, the, the elections in entirety. Given in, the fact that there was in, government involved. In precisely, it. precisely. Mm -hmm. We nullify it with costs and we give a square cost to all the candidates who technically qualified. Then the guy had and campaign free and fair. I mean, doing that with the cost will be, it will not cost me seven any money because of our money anyway. Mm -hmm. And then we go ahead and have a genuine fresh by elections in, 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 in Bukedia. Yeah? Mm -hmm. And, uh, and finally, because I've told this program when we're discussing electoral reform, one of the things I believe is that uh, if Nobat Mao is listening, one of the things he should do with his friend, Mr. Museveni, is that a future um, major electoral friends, uh, you know, should um, f be able to be faced with the fact that uh, uh, you do not participate in elections. If you've been found to have a criminal record, you should not participate in the, in, in the election office. Actually, in UK, that is, is, that's, that's the norm. But number two, in this case, if you are the one who contributed to the rigging, 
you should not be participating in the, bio, in, in, in the next election. The next one, yeah. So in which case then we do it like that, NRA gets another candidate, you know, and then uh, the guy who is, uh, is the guy or lady who's alleged the LC5 chairperson does not stand and maybe they are barred for election forever or maybe give them 10 years and things like that, five years. Actually, normally if that happened, I'm giving you answers to many other questions. You people, as young people, you'll be replacing us in the next five, 10, 20 years, mm -hmm. but replacing in, in a better environment. And now, while all these are happening, I hope the judiciary are watching because there is a new information that just arrived in that um, in Kenya, um, Ruto's appointment of what he calls the, 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 the chief administrative secretaries, you know, um, uh, which were contrary to the law, um, to the constitution, were challenged in court. And as I understand it, you know, I've not confirmed it, but I think it was almost certainly the case that uh, the, 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 the high court has um, ruled against him. Meaning that um, the courts in Kenya have, uh, um, have uh, nullified an election. Uh, they controversially, on the other extreme, um, allowed <laughs> Uruto's election. So meaning, <laughs> notwithstanding all the challenges taking place, there is a semblance of, of men and women of okay. independence coming mm. and systems sort of relatively building space and coming. Yeah, and right. since you asked me, talked about my experience, I, while waiting for my uh, A-level, O-level results, I spent with my brother who was then teaching in Kenya. And Ugandans were highly revered. Ugandan primary school teachers were teaching sec Kenya, te Kenya secondary schools. And we can, they're doing excellent work. Yeah, yeah. because uh, of the education system that was here. Because of quality of education system here. And then um, what happened also is that then Moy was in charge. And the Kenya at the time, people didn't think that there would be any Kenya without Moy. Mm. So things move, for, move on. What am I trying to tell you, young Ugandans? That it might look like NRA is not going anywhere. anywhere yeah. you know? <laughs> but no, NRA will retire to Rachitura at some stage in our lifetime. Mm. And, and the, I can also tell you that, well, uh, some of the people who you see and you think they're, 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 they're operating like, uh, you know, the like rocks or, or whatever, heaven. Mm. No, they're basically merely as human as you are. I, I want to ask you just this one more before mm. we go in for a short promotion break. Mm. Now, you do mention, of course, the number of instances where we have had those election violence from the 1996 to um, the, the, the way Dr. All Vesiger, of them, all of them. Really. Yeah, Dr. Vesiger has been treated, mentioning the uh, poor uh, in these previous yeah, nominations. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and yeah. I know lots of these things that have happened really over time. In, in retrospect, do you think that, uh, is it a good sign that sanity can and might be restored now that the president uh, looks back in his own camp and looks at the practices and thinks this is not the right way to do business? And, and feels like there's a better thing we can do. Do you think there's some hope that there's going to be a light, there's going to be some sort of sanity moving forward? No, I, I have been told an optimist by people in the opposition. I've been told, called an optimist in UBC. I have been called an optimist by guys like you in the media. <laughs> and I've been called an optimist by people, my friends in the NRA. Mm -hmm. I am completely an optimist about this country and the possibilities. As far as this is concerned, I have even suggested that Museven may be responding to me. Museven may be <coughs> responding to some of you who've raised these issues because it was too embarrassing. Because one of the things that has also been said is that apparently, and people sometimes when they say this is as if it's breaking news, oh, you know, he was watching television, you know, as if the guy's <laughs> special God. You know, kind of, so no, so me, these NRA guys know, watch, and follow. And when I come here to have a conversation, I'm having a conversation with the whole country. And in many cases, I'm having conversation, knowing very well that these guys are watching mm. and that they examine their conscience and to change. And as I said, we, we're not here to punish and do the policy there versus us. We're simply saying that, well, you know, if it's able to trigger something in your conscience, um, so be it. So in the very unlikely event that Mr. Museveni, um, his conscience was tested mm. and he said, no, this is uh, too embarrassing, you know, it would be fantastic news. But also it may be the case because the guy who was beaten was his fellow NRA guys. He was you know, that well, independent guy was in you know, NRA, yeah, NRA in, 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 you know, from, from, basically. Technically, the word independent should not have leaning. I'll, I'll explain <laughs> that again to him. No, this is an NRA guy, 
you know, but it's true as an independence, maybe because he lost in the primary or something like that. Ah, yeah. And 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 there and and actually in some of those areas, there are people who are no nonsense when it comes to protecting Museveni. Yeah, so yeah. Museveni also, I don't know what what weed some of the people there who drank for some <laughs> of these things. You know, no seriously, yeah. some of these guys are so extreme when it comes to yeah, yeah, protecting yeah, some of this, which is actually bad politics. Yeah, yeah. You know, because you should not be about life and death. You know, politics should not be about life and death. Politics should be about alternative a views, of ideas, yeah. um, you know. uh, indeed, contest of ideas, alternative views, and uh, opportunities, and uh, a, 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 um, a desk like this where you and I have a conversation, and then we have watchers and observers, and people pick, and then uh, whoever is able to persuade the majority, they go with them. And, and they and, work together and they, after and they, that. They work together to build in the interest of the, the household. That's basically what it's all about. And, 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 um, and maybe the sooner, the older generation, for the moment mainly, you know, uh, who are in charge, you know, plus some of us who follow them like zombies, woke up and give you guys a possibility of going for politics in which, you know, it's a competition of ideas. And after all, those ideas uh, that, no, these are my way, but these are my ways to sort out the studio. <laughs> it's not, these are not my ways in order for me to no, confine myself in a particular corner. So if we realize that, that at the end of the day, we only have one world, one earth, one the Republic of Uganda, and uh, whatever else we're doing, I know some people have got their children, they take their children to, to special, to, you know, powerful schools abroad, using predominantly our money, but at the end of the day, those people's children and our children will be going to the should ideally they should be going to the same school, <laughs> same medical facilities, and they should be competing for the same jobs at the same time. Yeah. So actually, if you spe if you specialize in in teaching your son good manners, and then you leave the others, don't forget that they will be colleagues one time in an office, <laughs> and the bad manners behavior <laughs> might <laughs> might that in your son whether you like yeah, it or yeah, not. Yeah. So <laughs> anyway, um, yeah. All right. Uh, so uh, to just a little more to, we have had incidences where there has even been shootings mm. at rallies. Like, for example, the Chagula and yeah, Saga yeah, in yeah, the previous yeah, yeah. Uh, elections campaigns. And, and of course, the president didn't do anything. But we also had situations, for example, the recent Mabati Saga, the Karamoja Mabati, mm. where the president came also again and gave a, br gave a brief, said, this has happened, we're going to work and see how we make this right. And, and uh, by and large, a lot of people still feel like there has not been a solution to those problems. But also when this has happened, when he has put out a brief, especially this very, very last one, a lot of opposition politicians have said that Museven is a hypocrite to speak about violence in elections. That, I mean, are we, are we supporting the progress of the system to make sure that it works? Because even when we feel like something is happening in a good regard, we still trash it. No. We what are not, does it help? No, people are not trashing it. That's what democracy is. Unfortunately, Uganda is not a democracy. And unfortunately, the guys in charge are not Democrats. <laughs> You're absolutely right. In democracies, by the way, um, however good <coughs> idea uh, one political party brings, yeah, mm -hmm. it will have to face the scrutiny of the opposition, the, the other side, and normally it will have to face the scrutiny of the media mm. on behalf of the majority people, public, yes, yes. you know. And, and so whatever it is, I, I'll give you another quick example. Um, there was a conversation in which, again, I was, I was lucky to have been participated in. I was a, a participant in the minimum wage debate in the UK, mm. I told you. Yes. I think I told this program before. I have been uh, a, a participant in uh, discussions around equalities, um, that's why I know that is why I know that Uganda doesn't have trade union organizations, <laughs> you know, and that uh, uh, um, and the sooner we have trade union organizations uh, that represent workers and the people, the better. Uh, and maybe if we had strong trade union organizations, we would not be stuck talking about thieves at NSSF, you know. <laughs> um, um, so there was a conversation around young single mothers, women who have children, and. Uh, and maybe they're not married or they're staying on their own, but they've got to struggle to go to work mm -hmm. and they've got to struggle to make sure that children go to, to school. But early education mm -hmm. and therefore child care, mm -hmm. nursery education. I was telling a group of young people the other day in a small, uh, uh, in a small conversation about how big it was um, when the, the labor, UPC leaning side of thinking, we're saying that uh, 
uh, governments ought to provide, or local councils, local governments ought to, meaning districts, council <laughs> equivalent, mm -hmm. ought to give um, free nursery spaces to three to five year old children mm. in their respective areas. And the conservatives, which would normally be the, 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 the rich, most even group kind of people, mm -hmm. we're saying, oh, that, will, that is too expensive for government to afford. These lazy girls who just go ahead and produce, and produce, produce, produce and whatever, and they're lazy, whatever, is their fault kind of stuff, you know? This thing became a big debate, and it was up to the left to um, make calculations that actually the pub, the state, a rich, the fifth richest country in the world, that's all, you know, mm. Britain, can afford to cater for all these people. And if the, 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 the children, three to five year olds, particularly from poorer families, are the part of our citizenry, it's the real role of government to support them. And they calculate on the basis of the monies that we get, and they calculate on terms of the tax reliefs that they give to the Sudirs of this world, mm -hmm. and some of the others that they steal via Loboa and to Peniti. And they say that if those monies are ever, it should be able to cater for this. You know these things now become matter of policy. Then you go to party conferences, as I was trying to tell you how parties have these debates, branch organizations have these debates, sometimes within the internal organization. Mm. Things are thrashed so that by the time they become manifesto issues, they've been tested yeah. and there is clear public opinion, at least party public opinion on it, before you take it nationally. So this business of three to five year olds, 20 years ago in Britain, it wasn't there. Right now, it's a matter of routine. Nursery spaces for three to five year olds. Once my daughter hit three, I, you know, it was actually the first time that I was able to say that I'm able to go ahead and make a travel kind of stuff. What am I saying to you? <laughs> I'm saying, um, as of today, there is no conservative council in Britain that can say we are going to withdraw. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Nursery support. They actually now begin to talk as if they're the experts in delivering it. Just like, uh, you know, some of our friends here would like to do that. So, so no, it is not bad to critique uh, alternative uh, political uh, schools. And on the other hand, actually, even if you want to do it for political reasons, you know, you don't see myself any, you know, you, 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 you know cooperatives are, are good, but you want to find a way of, you know, whatever. Don't you say, no, no don't say it's UPC. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, you know, so, if you do it and you give it whatever dressing, but in principle it works, fine. Finally, political leaders like me, by the way, this is official. Oh, we acknowledge the good of the other. We do. My problem, for instance, like in NRA, and I've been asked this several times, could you just say one thing that NRA has done good since they came to power? The problem is that I can't see any. <laughs> but if there was one, you know, <laughs> that for example, NRA did, you know, so for instance, when they found our railways in Pakwach, mm. you know, instead of killing it, if they had extended it to Koboko and took it to Nimule, you know, mm. I would say, no, you know, these guys did this thing and now at least we've got a decent environment. They were supposed to have electric trains. If by now we have bullet trains, <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know, I would say no. You know, um, our friends there, they've been in power for too long, but uh, we give them credit, you know. Uh, now at least we don't have to suffer. The other day, uh, some uh, families and close family friends were traveling to Toro. They spent nine years, I mean, nine, nine hours, nine hours yeah. you know, and they were furious going to Toro. In, <laughs> before Museveni went even to the bush, you know, the train was two and a half hours coming to Kampala. So, so, so these things, so problem is that. But then finally, that is also your real right linked to, as I said, good winners with bad uh, losers. And then finally, question of leadership. Genuine leaders take responsibility. Genuine leaders have humility. Genuine leaders concede. Mm -hmm. They'll even tell you who the, the feel that is not even mind that good commanders also withdraw retreat. They don't leave their guys to be whatever. To be, to, to be mashed up by the mm -hmm. other side. Okay. So, 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 so um, politically, we just don't have the culture. And the other thing, we don't have a culture of, um, uh, you know, just imagine Mr. Museveni in, uh, in uh, somewhere in, uh, in, uh, in some, some under tree somewhere, maybe they've come to visit me in Agongara, <laughs> him and Chagulanyi, you know, and we, we are having a tea, you know. <laughs> Rapport is a powerful thing. Yeah. 
Mr. Museveni, after that, on his way back, said, Look, you know, I met my young friend, Robert Chagulanyi. He told me something interesting about the NUP, whatever it is, I don't know their post. <laughs> but, you know, okay. fine, those guys are good guys. So, no, we don't have that. Finally, on that, why? It is, you see, occasions in Britain, which was even here with Oboti and Semogere, the leader of opposition side by side with the leader of government. They walk together, they'll sit and have conversations, as, as if they've not been shouting and pointing fingers at each other in Parliament. Mm -hmm. So we need to build that culture. And once we're able to build that culture, um, it will be possible that we learn from each other, we support one another, and we will stop fearing each other. That is either them or there is no life. In either us or there is no life kind of stuff. Yeah. And um, the only beneficiaries that can be your children. In the future. Let me ask you just one. I, somehow we need to go to a break. I'm but sorry. <laughs> just this last one. Mm. Do you think if, for example, the message this uh, president put out, of course condemning all of these things, if, for example, every other political player embraced it and said, let's do something about it, do you think there would be something significant happening to it? What do other political players need to do? No, the, the rallying. Well, right now we are praying. We are the other We are praying. Mr. Museveni, may it be true. <laughs> go and don't go and take action. It's, it's instead, instead of, of saying <laughs> that he's a hypocrite, if he supported the president, I did not say he's a hypocrite. I'm no, saying no, no, there's a lot of them, there's a lot of them who have said that <laughs> he's a hypocrite to be talking about political violence because it has been his signature in elections and all. Okay, can I frame it in a manner in which he takes it seriously, <laughs> Mr. Museveni? Thank you very much for coming. <laughs> 40 years later, I was in Bukede. I saw it was not good. <coughs> me, I'm even a witness. Mr. Museveni, you can call me your guys at anti corruption. Plus, uh, my brother, Okoto Jola, can call me as a witness. You know, let's make sure that we punish these people and let government officials who are there, you know, all of them be sacked, you know, and uh, some others who committed criminal offenses be, 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 be criminalized. You're a fantastic leader of the Republic <laughs> of Uganda. We just know that those people who are blocking you, then, and we were told some people make money on you on appointments. So for you, you didn't know this thing. For you, you were busy post-COVID. The COVID that you had recently is good. You're now, you're now, you're now okay. Mm. You know, Mr. Museveni, now that you know what is happening in Bukedia, we thank you for taking quick action. Once we sorted the Bukedia, Mr. Museveni, Trust me, the next by-election which takes place wherever it is, you and I shall be walking side by side. You'll be campaigning for <laughs> NRA candidates. Me, I'll be campaigning for UPC candidates, and we shall build this country together. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. You're going to go in for a very short commercial break. When we come back, I have a very... Actually, there are two. From, one was... I, I kept the question from when we were about, like, starting 10 minutes in. You, you said something that, of course, I felt like you need to expand a little bit yeah. on. And, and of course, we'll look at some of the other issues that I did highlight when we were starting, just to get our whole perspective on uh, the state of affairs generally in the country and, and try to find a solution, of course. Here and there, we do give opinions on what we think would be the best practices. It doesn't necessarily mean that, for example, I as an individual have monopoly over wisdom and we know the best practices, but we give an idea on what we think should be done and how better we can get as a community. So let's go for a short commercial break. We'll be right back. Don't switch. The Alternative Dig Talk Real Issues Real Talk Hi Rogers, can I ask you something? Uh, shoot What does corruption mean? Well, summarily Corruption is abuse of public power for personal gain or for the benefit of a group to which one owes allegiance. For example, when a public office is abused by an official accepting or soliciting a bribe. By the way, private people can be corrupt too, like bribing police officers to escape fines. Mm, okay, so exactly how does that concern me? <laughs> well, do you pay taxes? I guess, yeah. What does that have to do with this? Everything, because those taxes you pay are supposed to facilitate services you use, like water, electricity, roads construction, medicines in hospitals, name it. Hmm, okay, that is much bigger than I thought, but it can be stopped, right? Well, yes it can, although it may not be as easy as it sounds, and here is the reason why. Corruption roots are grounded in our country's social, political, economic, bureaucratic traditions and policies. So... What has kept it going this long? I mean, why don't we stop it? 
Well, the main reason why it has been here for so long is because institutions are weak, either as a result of poorly defined ethical standards of public service, weak administrative and financial systems, or ineffective watchdog agencies. Hmm. What can we do to stop it? Um, at a national level, we must focus on strengthening the independence and effectiveness of public institutions that fight corruption. At a personal level, we must commit to never giving a bribe. I promise I'll never give a bribe. Well, that's a great decision you have made. Me and you now have to spread this message to all our friends. If we all do our part, corruption will be no more. This message is brought to you by Alternative Digitalk. Alternative Dig Talk. Real issues. Real talk. Welcome back from that short commercial break, ladies and gentlemen. My name again is Roger Studiawe, and together with my guest, uh, Mr. Joseph Ochiano, he's a, gent uh, a man from the UPC. And you also know that UPC is one of those, oh, I think, oldest political parties in this country. Oldest, yes. yeah. In fact, I think the first president Uganda ever had was coming from the UPC. The first president. prime minister. If, well, prime minister. Yeah, which, well, is, basically, which the, is basically, yeah, for yeah. that side, that president. Yeah, yes, yeah, yeah. Right. So, so, so you understand that we, we have the source of, you know, information and wisdom that we are getting from. But I, I want to appreciate every one of you who's joining us from wherever you're joining us from. We appreciate because we know that taking your time, especially now that we're using data, to sacrifice your data to be a part of this discussion mm. is very important. We don't take it for granted. So thank you so much for being with us. Now, we are in the second hour, and we're going to look at a number of things. But I, before we get to that, I had two things. You said that I, you, you accept and give credit where someone has done, where your opponent has done better. And I wanted to just say, is, to ask you, is there one thing, just one thing you can credit the current administration for doing? It's a very unfortunate thing. <laughs> no wonder you are laughing as we we're going to break. I was wondering, what is this good news? No, <laughs> Kumbi, you are preparing to give me such a difficult time. No, I have tried again and again and again. I have been asked these questions many times. I also want to tell you on a serious note that I... I was chairman of the debating club for my school, mm. uh, St. Joseph's Nagongera, in primary six. What I'm saying to the young people is that I started rather early. Mm. But one of the things that debating helps you do is a balancing uh, objectivity and opinion and thought. Yeah. I also started reading novels and books very early. But I can also tell you that um, some of the compositions that we are made to read, I don't know what this is under UPE system, mm. but generally by the time really you're doing literature and preparing to go to universities, um, you're being prepared to critique. Finally, though, fast forward, any average citizen <coughs> who has done most bachelor's degrees should know about objectivity. Mm. But definitely, and now we have many people, except I don't know the quality of master's degrees. <laughs> but people who do master's degrees, and that's why I'm saying you young guys, let's work very hard and make sure there's an opportunity for most of you guys to uh, um, get decent education, most of you guys to have degrees. Um, they, they, they should be basic entitlements. They're not necessarily the end of life, mm. but in the developing world in this country, in this in these days, considering where the world economy is going mm. as Africa, mm. I'm saying that we need to make sure that we give as much opportunity for degree qualifications, not strict degrees and not, you know, whatever as mm. possible. And, and so, hence, our commitment to drive for education. But for people who are lucky then to get master's degrees. Mm. Um, usually the idea is that you're adding an element 
to a body of knowledge, an mm. element to a body of knowledge. But there is what, normally in research, and they do it way back, including in, in, in first degrees, when they ask you to do what they call literature review. Mm. There you are reading, but part of the expectations at you, that, that you're able to make critical comparisons, you know? And so you learn <laughs> to say that so-and-so's view about the rail network to northern Uganda, you know, was fantastic and they believe that we needed to take this long tail, snaky tail to the north mm -hmm. because it's going to ease transportation and things like that. But maybe they forgot that the rail network that the uh, UPC is uh, insisting that should have gone to Koboko, or certainly to Nimule, uh, would have broken through the forests, you know, and so therefore killed the environment, you know, who possibly displaced families, or maybe that, uh, you know, in somewhere going to um, Moroto, you know, it went through a, a, um, through, um, a park, a game park, in uh, developed economies, some of these conversations uh, it make uh, interesting. I was discussing with a young, beautiful lawyer yesterday, and law, uh, doctor actually yesterday, a conversation around how the debates about merely an extended runway for an airport. You know, Entebbe Airport. If you go around the world, you'll come back sick sometimes. Okay, yeah, you know, know. <laughs> you know. <laughs> so think about a, a, you know debate that we want to, to expand the airport, want to build the rail runway. And there'll be demonstrations and sometimes members of parliament will fall and sometimes governments will fall because you oppose, because the majority of the people oppose expansion of air transportation because of the environment, air pollution and things like that. Um, all these debates um, are as a result of competition of ideas, difference of opinion with evidence. So at my stage in life, I am really, really fair. You notice I gave Mr. Museveni some fantastic credit in the, in the <laughs> previous, the, the entire? You did. Yeah. Uh, uh, and once again, I am inviting you for the second time for tea in Nagongera. So fantastic credit. And he's a great old man. And elders like Mr. Museveni should be respected and should be encouraged to be playing around with the grandchildren and you should respect them once again. Okay. But 40 years of NRA. I've critiqued the NRA's 10-point program. They talk from democracy to corruption to everything else. I don't want to use strong words that my, you know, my, my talk, you know, it's itching. <laughs> kind of, you, there's nothing. So, no, I genuinely, genuinely don't know anything in the last 40 years that NRA as a regime or allegedly as a government, if they want me to call them like that, have done, which is so special that required them to go to Luero, to the bush, and, you know? I don't know anything they've done thus far that justifies them to be around 40 years. But most importantly, I do not know anything specifically unique that an NRA regime has done that no other government would do, something so extraordinary that no other government has done for which, therefore, they deserve credit. Because something is important. And why I'm driving that? One of the things and struggles in th third world countries, back into Uganda, can you imagine that citizens uh, in, uh, in Ibanda eh, think it's a privilege to see an ambulance, a new ambulance, be going to, 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 to their hospital as, a, as, 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 a, as, as an allocation? Should be a routine location. Citizens in Itojo think it's a privilege to see a, a, a pickup with some syringes going to Itojo Hospital built by UBZ 50 years ago. Mm. Um, no, governments are elected, or in this case, like NRA, they come to power by force to deliver on behalf of the people. So, you know, so, so I, I give you credit for the extraordinary work you've done beyond the normal. But in this case, ask me how many notes and, uh, in, you know, the deflect, deflectionary uh, points I can give to NRA. Those are very many, you know. 
as I said, you find we build many banks, mm. you sink them. We extended rail networks, you kill them. We picked Uganda Air, Air, Airlines from where it was East African Airways, it became East, uh, Uganda Airlines in, uh, in the 70s when Amin was there. You know, we, we, we equipped the stock and things like that, you sink it. We build roads here, you sink it. We plan for uh, Kampala Orbital around, the, the, you know, for, for road networks, you know, you fudge Northern Bypass. So I, j I just don't know what I can give them credit, but there's something that Mr. Museveni used to boast about. Oh, we brought security. Can you imagine Mr. Museveni brought the security? So they brought, they brought <laughs> security from where? You know? Oh, oh, yeah, you actually said So, so you brought it. security from where? Mm. And yet you can have a conversation with you about security and insecurity in Uganda, starting at independence, and we see who really, really created and caused insecurity in this country. You see, I want to try and be fair there. I don't want to go mm. into too specific to person. So no, unfortunately, there's nothing special I can give credit to NRA for. You know, one thing I acknowledge is they managed to come to power by force. They've maintained it. That and they've maintained it for 40 years. That I acknowledge. But I, do you give it credit now? If they had turned Uganda into an appetite-style South Africa by building infrastructure, networks, things like that, and they're still clobbering people, I say, no, they've done so. Even that, they failed. So basically, if you can't fail, if you can't manage to maintain one road network from Kampala to Namamve, Kampala Mukon, the road you found, mm. why should you be thankful? You know? Why? If you cannot maintain a rail network, why? If you cannot stock a hospital that you found, we UPC found a forest, built it, equipped it, stocked it, stuffed it, you know, and delivered it with the people, including monies for it, mm. and used it for research and doctors advice, and they went and the Ugandan doctors, marketable in South Africa, market you know, in Kenya, market in Kenya, market in South Africa, market in Botswana. Some of my friends, top consultants. In Canada, top consultants in Scotland, top consultants in England. Sometimes I just feel sick, and then I find like you know, uh, the other day when you, you you're having a, a, a flu here, and then I remember got a friend of mine who fears going to hospital because he can't afford three hundred thousand shillings yeah. consultation for money for tests. Am I being unfair? Yeah. Mm, no, I don't. well, fairly no. Thank you, sir. All right, so uh, we're going to go a little bit. I like this one thing, and I'm going to say it. <laughs> Every time <laughs> there's a question, you, you, you notice, I notice that you first, a friend of mine likes to call it giving it flesh. You give it a whole bit of foundation that when, by the time you reach to a point, someone has literally understood what thank you said. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, so thank you so much. But uh, two, the, one of the other yeah, issues I wanted us to look into are the terror alerts that have been happening. Mm, mm. I think over, I think last month, I think earlier last month, the US did issue an, a, mm. a terror alert. Yeah. And, uh, telling their citizens that you know what, you need to pay attention, you need to be cautious, you need to, don't go to particular places at certain times, don't do this, don't do that, this is why you go for a certain thing. One of the things was you don't look suspiciously rich because they're going to you know, <laughs> <laughs> hold you by the collar. Those are some of the things. And then mm. the UK, uh, recently just did the same. And the last time the UK issued an alert is when we had some bombings happening at the Parliamentary Avenue. Mm. What, what does this say about our security system? You did mention that the current administration does boast about bringing <laughs> security. <laughs> so what, which which what, they've spectacularly failed. Uh, yes, yeah, so what, what does this say about that security that mm. we have? And, and, and second, what does it cost our country? These terror alerts, does it cost our country at any, in any sense? I think just an important disclaimer um, is that um, um, as Africans, it's a bit unfortunate that we have thus far to depend on uh, warnings from foreign governments and foreign agencies that we, in many cases, yeah. we like sometimes to bash when it's convenient. And number two, that as this very same us, we boast of how much we build security and we've been oh, so we say, now I'm going to go to infrastructure, you know, because I've been spending all your money on security mm. and we still have those issues. Um, so that's a bit ironical. But that tells you about the global inequality, inequality in which we are 
But maybe that's why um, it's emphasizing the point I am always doing, uh, trying to make that um, we should use every penny that we have of our public money to invest in our people, uh, to invest in our systems, to invest in our government, to invest in the future, so that at least our children, and if not children's children, should be governing and governed in nation states that are fully independent and capable of not only looking after their security, mm. but also giving security advisories to other governments uh, outside the continent. Um, but number two, you're right that these uh, alerts were made, and spectacularly in the last one, a, a, a regime a representative dismissed it, meaning abusing these guys. Yes. Uh, you, yeah? Yes. Yes. And in a cheeky and unfortunately extremely sad and irresponsible way, um, terror attack did occur. Mm -hmm. And we've now had two major incidents in Somalia and uh, the miseries in, in, in Kasese. In Kasese yes. So therefore for that, um, it's quite concerning. Um, what does it say about our security intelligence? I, 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 I'm coming. No, I'm not sure whether, to be fair, that's what I'm trying to say. I'm not sure whether it should be um, an indictment on the NRA intelligence, not necessarily, because um, these agencies, these governments, over the years, um, they will traditionally have uh, intelligence networks which are. Yes broadly more advanced than ours. And that's why I was trying to say that instead of, spend, instead of spending money uh, eating Loboa with the, with the Mbabazis in, in London, we should invest in our systems. <laughs> that was my point. And so uh, instead of uh, beating people in, in Bukedia, by election should be a matter of routine so people should not be spending uh, 100 million that's shillings money, as candidates. Mm -hmm. and, um, and so if that happened, We'll be able to mitigate this. I think to me what is more important is that this time round uh, we're able to take it more seriously. Um, it is also the case, because I also know roughly, that um, um, some of these alerts may come out, but there may be cases that by the time the alerts come, maybe our own security systems will already have detected those. Mm -hmm. I, I hope Mr. Museveni, your NRA security is, is good enough. You know, some I've got friends, you know, in, in you know so so I, I have uh, ever believed that to, uh, um, to, to say that it is possible that once in a while some of these things will possibly be detected. Um, but unfortunately, for the mentality of the African, if I see how they've governed my country, maybe they see and they don't take it as seriously as it or as precisely as it should be. Um, but then the most important question is why we've reached a stage as a country where we are terror focused. That is very unfortunate. I've said again, include, again, including on this program, that uh, is a manifestation of uh, the messy manner in which we've uh, handled uh, some of our own internal policies, domestic domestic policies, policies. But it's a manifestation of uh, how bad we've handled our regional policies and an implication in terms of our foreign policy, which is basically to tend to be region, predominant African. Uh, African. Um, as I said, we invaded Rwanda. <coughs> I was opposed to it. We invaded and occupied Rwanda. We invaded and occupied Congo. Um, we invaded and sort of basically continued to occupy South Sudan. Those are facts. And um, we, we went to go and do the cleaning job for Anglo America in Somalia. So in so doing, you will will annoy you, will annoy somebody, you know. Yes. My view is that uh, as a UPC, our uh, national security should be about securing our borders, should be about uh, capacity to maintain law and order and secure the pro lives and property of the citizens in Uganda. So therefore, internal security threat, not anything that is happening in somebody's bedroom in Kinshasa, mm. yeah? Mm. Uh, but that we should have a position, and it's not a contradiction. As I said, the UPC did what I'm trying to tell you, because I'm talking about UPC policy, lest people think, you know, I'm, I'm being simplistic here. Um, <laughs> we maintained what I said, but we still were able to reasonably support the Lumumbist forces in Congo. We maintained what I'm talking about as a by the way, and we were able to support uh, 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 the liberation struggles in Southern Africa. 
we maintained our internal posi domestic position, but we had a very clear position on uh, the Arab-Israeli conflict uh, and with our position in support of the Palestinian people. And it was absolutely sensible for, an, a developed nation, for a developing nation state. That is where we should be. It becomes different when we begin doing other people's biddings, like we're doing, we, we, we started and we are continuing to do for Anglo-America and Somalia, mm -hmm. or we begin to export certain ways into other neighboring countries like we did in Rwanda and Congo. Or then we begin to create reasons for going to create roads, but we're basically exporting you know, uh, access to timber to come and loot. So you, you realize that away from, quote, ADF, before people talk ADF, you know, you see how our foreign policy engagements beyond our borders impact and or influence mm. or create possibilities for enemies and attracting uh, 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 threats in domestical. And this, this regime should take responsi responsibility for it. But now that we are there, it's our job basically to rally around as Ugandan and simply say, what is it that that's the best we can do to mitigate this one by making sure that uh, we work with uh, everybody else to secure our country, but also make sure that we find a way in which we're able to make sure that things don't happen long term. The NRA guys would say that, oh, <clears throat> Islamic terrorism, you know, is a global phenomenon. It is. Um, why is it the case that they're much more angry in Uganda than in Kenya and Tanzania, where Kenya and Tanzania has got much more organized relationship of this? Of course, they will talk about the Westgate thing in Nairobi, you know, which yeah, is yeah. true, West and they also talk about the, the Dar es Salaam thing. But by and large, as of today, these guys are here in part because of our foreign policy. Now, granted, we also have... Um, Allegedly, that's another conversation. Uh, people talk about ADF, people talk about Jamuli, but Jamuli, Jamil Mukulu. Jamil Mukulu. Mm. But if you talk about what we know and some of what is presented, you know, in the press and in the wires and some of which are intelligence information mm. about the relationship between Mr. Museveni and this guy in Luzira, it as, you know, leads you to all sorts of things, meaning that unfortunately uh, uh, um, there is more than meets the eyes. But as I said, I hope that uh, Ugandans uh, um, are more alert generally. We, that's the best we can do to live as citizens. But the bottom line is, it's the responsibility of the state to protect all our lives and our properties. And so it's up to them this time to come and tell us we are sorry. Last time we dismissed these things and it was tragic. And this time around, we are taking much more uh, uh, um, uh, serious precautions and these are the ones to do because that's not my trade. My trade is to turn around Uganda People's Congress and make sure that we govern. And once we govern, we shall be able to make sure that we're in that position and we shall do it well for our people. Okay. To, uh, one or two things. One is on the positive side, I understand that these uh, alerts mm. do prepare us for those eventualities. In, in literally, Generally, ideally, most of the time ideally it should. Ideally, yeah, it should, yeah, yes. But, but <coughs> what, what is the negative cost of these alerts? Is there a negative cost? That's interesting. Um, I think, except for sometimes uh, um, alerting the, the terrorists um, to the extent that maybe, perhaps, in case there was intelligence monitoring, if intelligence was monitoring, following them, monitoring them, domestic intelligence, and so the other guys issue an alert, you know, it wakes up these guys that, well, you know, um, the Museveni's may not know where we are, but uh, the other ones know. But they know, know that they expect us. You know, so they expect us, so maybe it can disorganize the internal right, security arrangement. Mm. I've just made a very important security statement. I didn't, I didn't know that I had, uh, had a bit of skill on these things. <laughs> you know, so it, so it was that. But um, number two, it may be the case that uh, therefore, um, instead of maybe uh, attacking particular targets, they desperately attack other car targets, which sometimes may be uh, easy, soft targets rather than maybe whatever the original was. Mm. At the end of the day, terrorism is bad, and the terrorism is terrorism. That's yeah, why I reject that's terrorism true. in all its form, and I it's reject terrorism. everybody who's involved in terror mm. in all its form. Mm. And that's why I'm also saying that whatever happens, we should work extremely hard as citizens of this country to find ways in which common sense and reason uh, prevail, and so that there is leadership and space in which 
all Ugandans, including where we are about venting our grievances, be able to grant, vent our grievances in a manner in which is uh, constructive, productive, long term in terms of managing and resolving our conflicts than, than, than seeking uh, uh, um, uh, uh, violent shortcuts, mm. for which uh, Mr. Museveni himself is an expert. Okay. Well, thank you so much for <laughs> you did mention at one point that you didn't know you were good at <laughs> giving uh, security analysis. Mm. But yeah, thank you so much about that. I want us to also talk about, I don't want us to conclude without talking about this. Mm. I have a number of comments, but before I read them, mm. I want to talk about the retirement of the former IGP of the police. Who was that again? Uh, General Kari Kaihole. The, the soldier? Yeah. Uh -huh. uh, he has, uh, today, in fact, today, the 3rd of July, there has been, he, him alongside some other gentlemen, have been retired mm -hmm. officially. Now, we also know that... Retired? <coughs> retired. So they're no longer soldiers? They're going to retire. So is Tinye Funza also retired or not? I, th I think Tinye Funza was retired. Really. Was retired some time ago? Yeah, some time back. He lucky, yeah. lucky, lucky so, Kaihura. <laughs> so, uh, exactly, that's, that's, that's a point. Mm. There has been times when people, especially such as those, like the seducer in our situation, mm. were not retired because they were considered that they might pose uh, some bit of threats should they be independent. So keeping them in the confines of the martial law sort of checks them to not do funny things out of context. Now, Kaihuda is one person, and, and, and in, in 20, uh, around, was it 2018, him, he was charged with failure to protect war materials by issuing arms to unauthorized persons, including the border, border 2010. Mm. The, you remember that, mm. Chitata yeah. Saga. Mm. And, and the army also accused him of aiding and abetting the kidnapping, repatriating, kidnapping and repatriating Rwandan Rand, exiles who are mm. living in Uganda and refugees. Mm. Yeah? Mm. Between, that's between 2012 and 2016. Now, it, the charges are still ongoing in court because there has been no decision made mm. against him or you know, in his favor. But now there has been this thing of retirement. Is it... I mean, what does it mean in the first thing? What, what do you understand by all of this? What, does it, what sense does it make? You know, you're asking me to give credit to Mr. Museveni, and I was looking for the credits. I couldn't find them. So <laughs> thank you for asking this question. <laughs> no. Um, you know, one of the reasons why some of our friends in other opposition organizations, mm. um, sometimes uh, they might actually be accused of being radical, extremists, mm. angry, you know, pessimistic is simply because of some of these manifestations. These things really don't augur that very uh, um, well when it comes to the question of law, uh, civility, and et equity in, in polity. Um, it's clearly the case that um, we are in a military cum one party state, mm -hmm. and we are in a system which for the last 40 years is basically controlled by Mr. Museveni, uh, almost certainly possibly his family and those around him, and that everything else is neither here nor there. So everything else happens really around Mr. Museveni's whims. Unfortunately, I don't want to, to snatch back some of the, 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 the nice perfume we had given to him over, <laughs> over his letter. You know, so it's not surprising that people then at various institutional levels, including public servants, including some decent Ugandans who uh, finished Makero during uh, uh, UPC times. By the UPC times, Makero was not only free, but... Uh, you were, we were paid school fees, paid, 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 paid wages. I earned from the okay. public of Uganda, you know. They used to call it boom. So every time, time you go, you're not only given tra travel allowance, people in Bali would earn more than me for transport because they estimate how much the, the public is. bus distance is, yes. Mm. Um, but, you know, we get boom, which is equal. It's, it's equal amount of money. So boom was called like salaries. Some people can drink it in Kisenyi. Other people... Um, <laughs> Uh, buy good things to go ahead and impress, and others support their families in different other ways. Um, some people saved, and, and, and many people had turnarounds. I know somebody who, a lady who uh, in, the, in the early, late 60s, early 70s, built a beautiful home for, for, mm -hmm. for her parents, a turnaround her family. Um, so, your question was. Um, L largely, first, you know, first, uh, first of all, is uh, what do you make of this move? Yes, yes, yes. yes. But, but also, do you think there's another a political move yeah, behind yeah, this yeah, yeah, decision? Right. So, I'll say, so, so linking that to your question, I'm saying that um, this happened 
And so people were lucky to get many of these other things. But beyond that, people finished universities and had guaranteed jobs. So we had people who finished universities, even after all that privilege, they joined public services. Mm. And so um, there's some of the very senior civil servants at the moment had those privileges, they joined public services, and they rose to the level of uh, permanent secretaries, mm. unlike, unlike lucky people like Diane Anite and, uh, and, um, and Mayombo, which is another thing that UPS would stop, that, uh, um, that you don't become a PS by appointment of a privilege of a tea with so-and-so. Yeah, you should be you, a, you a must really go through the rank, because those are public services. Public servants, public servants, um, because it was so excellent, we, we had the best public service in the 70s. Uh, and uh, uh, that I mean took over. We had the best on the continent, by the way. This official, mm. you know. Because Amin did not play around with it, in fact, he picked some of the PSs to make them ministers. Amin's regime was able to sustain itself from 1971 up to about 1975, 76. So more than a, a parliamentary term, Amin ran a relatively stable as institutionally, mm -hmm. you know, and notwithstanding the fact that those of us who were then our party leaders were in exile, undermining him both in from within and without. Mm. Why? Because we had. So, guys, it's extremely important not only to educate your population, but to make sure that you've got systems and institutions. That's why my brother Barack Obama said to African leaders at uh, the African Union uh, uh, House in a, in a meaning hall in Addis Ababa that Africa does not need strong leaders, meaning some of these funny men who think they're really they're strong. strong yeah. but this continent needs strong institutions. So, <clears throat> so I bring you to these guys. If we had systems like that, I think the Kaihuras and what they did would be neither here nor there. I repeat, they would be neither here nor there. You can't be a criminal one morning, mm -hmm. and the, f the following day, you have been just spared like that by the whims of a ruler. There has been no, I do not, I, I either, I think it's just not, I have, I'm not alive to the fact mm. that there has been an express pardon from the president. I have not seen that. Mm. But the fact that he okayed his retirement <coughs> speaks volumes as to the progress. Precisely, and forgiven him his sins. As you, you yourself said, forgive mm. me sins. So now, some of the, 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 the claims, against, allegations against Kaihura mm. are extreme. They're treasonous allegations. Yes, yes, absolutely. So I know people who are lying in Lozira, you know, uh, on some cheeky, cheeky claims. You know, I know uh, my cousin, David Chandra Jamwa, you know, over NSSF. Mm. You know, uh, appeal after appeal and begging, whatever, and the health circumstances. So, who are these people who are pardoned and why? You know, and pardoned by who kind of stuff? Mm. You know, so really, if you come on television, you say, because Kaihura is not an ordinary average citizen. No, he's not. I said Kaihura is an army general. Yes. And uh, Kaihura is not only an army general, Kaihura was the head of mm. our national police force. And if Kaihura is accused, if true, that he was a party to doing some funny underground things with, uh, with uh, uh, another state which at one time was presented as a hostile state, what does it say about you and me? Exactly. Okay, what would happen if today, the 3rd of July, you know, um, it is found that you, Rogers, have a relationship of some sort with somebody of your age group who's a Rwandan intelligence, and because of our relationship with Rwanda, this could be people who grew up in Barara, grew mm -hmm. up in Kampala, mm -hmm. and they, you know, you used to go hang around and things like that. You go hard to team, maybe go to a local church, and you guys, maybe once in a while, you, you know, when you, you were turning 20, you started writing letters to girlfriends together. What would happen? You know, so this is, not, this is now then the real hypocrisy you're talking about from the other guys in the position. That's why I try to tell you that, no. Ugandans are being taken for a ride by Mr. Museveni. <laughs> and my worry is this is less about Kaihura, mm. but the implications for all of us. That there's one law for one person, one group of people, 
And another, the, another for the rest of for, us. For the, for, the, for the rest of us. You know, um, Mabati thieves, Museveni, all of a sudden, the other day, this DPP, I don't know whether they talked about last time, last week, that uh, Museveni decides that uh, um, um, his DPP decides that, uh, you know, his ministerial, top, top ministerial Mabati thieves are no longer thieves. They're not going to be prosecuted because they were misled. You know? And then there are some two, three poor guys in, in, in who, who, who are ministers. No wonder the Bagis, who maybe knew the other day, and I'm saying this without prejudice to the question of identity, say that, oh, there are, there are people who are being, um, who are being uh, uh, targeted because they're the soft ones, the, poor, the more powerful people who are being left. So what is the message for that? But most importantly, there are people who, demonstrate, I, don't, I don't have the fact about this, you're the journalist. Mm. Um, there are people who... Uh, there are people who went to, to demonstrate, people who were arrested because of a demonstration over Mabati, aren't they? And some people still in, in detention because of the demonstration over Mabati, as I understand it. Mm. You know? So in the, their detention, but the Mabati thieves are walking free. <laughs> and Mabati thieves are not only walking free, Mabati thieves are sitting in cabinet. And Mabati thieves are not only sitting in cabinet, but Mabati thieves are eating our money. And Mabati thieves, while they were still suspects before Mr. Museveni made his ruling, they're eating tea. And everything these people are eating and driving in, including the offices that they're sitting in, are our properties. Just think about it. You know, this is, you know, it changes my tone on this program today. I go towards being, you know, it's actually unfortunate. Mr. Museveni is taking this country for granted. There's impunity. And there's a fight that we are ordinary guys who came from the bushes. They don't know whether they came from the bushes. They came from the bushes in a very terrible way. They committed uh, crude atrocities in the world that for us, UPC, we said we forgive them. That's why I also say in another tone, they said, look, this country, by the way, seriously, we just need a national truth and reconciliation post you know. Post Museveni. Post. Is, is no, no, no meaning, of course, no, because <laughs> it will not, Museveni will not, Museveni will not call for one. <laughs> yeah. He called for one those days uh, to try the Mwangas. You remember what Mwanga told the, that, that funny commission of his? <laughs> because it was Museveni's commission, not, not a national commission. What Museveni, Mwanga told them is taunting them today. So, no, seriously, um, when I was being gentle at the beginning, mm. this regime is just tired. Mr. Museveni has taken this country for a ride for such a long time. You know, to govern a country for one week, is a privilege, yeah. huge privilege. To rule it by force over 40 years is excess privilege. These guys have had all the privileges. Um, they, they should just give Uganda, and particularly you guys, younger people, uh, a, a chance uh, to be able to forge uh, um, uh, a beginning for which we hope, because it's a fantastic country, that we're able to have um, a Uganda tomorrow, uh, which picks lessons from the past, some of their terrible bad lessons today, but which gives a possibility that this country can also be run like any other civilized country, you know, on the basis of the rule of law. Rule of law, I want to insist to link this. If you're a suspect, you're a suspect. And the person accusing you must provide some evidence. That's why I told Museveni cannot accuse UPC of anything because it has no evidence over it. They never did it because they don't have it. Mm. Likewise, as I said, if... Um, my battery thieves are there if, if, the pol if there's an incident, whatever. It goes to the police. You don't return to office. Me, by the way, I worked in public offices, you know. No. You, the, 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 it cannot be, you cannot be suspected to have um, allegedly been accidentally stolen, some, t taken somebody else's phone, which you thought it, the claim it was not yours, and then you return to your desk. You don't. You know? A lot of things are... are, are in Uganda, you also get to learn a new thing every day. But well, before we conclude, can I uh, look through? Yeah, sure, I'm sure. going to read some of the comments. May not read necessarily all of them. Yeah. I want to thank you once again, ladies and gentlemen, for being with us. Uh, thank you so much for coming for the two hours. I thank you absolutely. Uh, some of the people that uh, there's Nacha in narrator. She says, "I can't miss this show every Monday." I learn a lot from the pot of knowledge that we always hold Thank in you. the studio. You. I've had MP Oyam South and also Minister of Gender mm. in Museveni's government. He said to officially join NRA. What is your com his comment on, of the alleged crossing? Mm. I notice you really like that question. I, I, For a, among it. No, it's a, yeah, among it. I have seen those reports. If Betty is officially crossing to NRA, then that is long overdue. 
Biti has been NRA before I returned to Uganda from exile. Biti has been NRA almost certainly perhaps since before Milton Obote, my president, died. Mm. And, um, and, uh, and uh, so Biti may just, just be formally returning home, having done her fantastic <laughs> work on behalf of Mr. Museveni. <laughs> In, 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 in causing a bit of headache in Uganda People's Congress. So good luck to her. But Betty is a fantastic lady. One, she's very beautiful. Number two, she's generally a very clever person. And number three, Betty, you agree with her or not, she'll come here, she'll not, she will not, she will not quarrel. She will smile and will joke. Mm. So those are, those are credits. You see me, I give credit where it is. <laughs> and then, of course, Betty is my sister-in-law. She's my mulam, you really? know. Uh, uh, so, so, so no, um, that, that's Betty. But and she's doing the right thing. My good friend and brother, Nobat Mao, did the right thing. Uh, um, you do it openly during the day. It's Milton Obote, the father of this country, who said that what uh, concerns all must be discussed by all. So, you know, this Kachini Chini is, is funny business for us. We don't <laughs> accept. So she, she's, uh, you know, good luck to her in NRA. Uh, let her do that. Let anybody else who is in the UPC one leg in UPC one, Please, if you feel NRA is a cool place, just go down there. We shall continue to deal with you. Important point. The next constituency to Yam North is, uh, is, uh, is Omoro, uh, where my good brother uh, uh, Jacob was. Uh, There's Jacob, a question on why you're not going there to, comp for, to campaign for the candidate uh, for UPC. How do they know I'm not going there? You know? <laughs> um, how do they know? No, but no, I, I, I am... I am, uh, I, um, I am uh, offering all the maximum support. As I said, I was in Bukedia. Mm. When I was in Bukedia, no leader of UPC went. I was in Soroti during the Soroti by-election, no leader of UPC went. And remember, we had three UPCs, unfortunately. Okay, there are two other UPCs. <laughs> Jim McKenna and Walubiri are the leaders, no UPC. So maybe that question should go to, to, to Walubiri. <laughs> we want to see him in, in, in New York North. But no, um, I, 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 I think um, I'm doing all I can, and I, I hope uh, uh, Eunice uh, wins, and uh, uh, depending on, on whatever else is happening leading to elections, uh, I'll possibly find myself to Inu Yam. Uh, other than Jimmy Akena, I have uh, uh, been able to stop at, Oy, to, at Kamdini Corner, which is in Kam, rather than Kamdini and, um, and part of Oyam. I stop over the right, so, so road sides and I talk to people and I, I, I campaign for UPC. Me, I campaign for UPC, tell, I campaign for UPC in the morning, in the <laughs> afternoon, in the evening, all the time. All right. Uh, there's, there's this question from Mr. Mwine. He says, thank you for the show that you did mention in the first hour that you, he, he did mention in the first hour that he does not agree or accept the 1995 constitution. Why is that? All right. All right. I don't think it was in the first hour. I think I said that before. No, you, you're right. I, in the sense that 1995 constitution was an NRA constitution. Um, 1995 constitution was a constitution um, uh, that uh, Mr. Museven designed to, to, to enable himself, to justify himself. Mm. Uh, all the only things that uh, he forgot that some of the provisions that he put to, put, to, put, to punish Oboti would land home to touch him. That is the, the age limit and, uh, and, uh, and, uh, and, uh, and age limit and term limits. But primarily also too because uh, that constitution was, was the Constituent Assembly was a was a, a monolithic NRA constitution, constitution assembly. Mm -hmm. The election was when so UPC never participated. No DP political party did not participate. And uh, tell that guy that you know asking uh, that gentleman what's the name again? Uh, Ethan. Ethan. Hi, Ethan. Good guy. Uh, Ethan, just look around and you'll find around the world that uh, there are no sensible national constitutions, particularly that bill consensus long term, uh, which are designed when political parties in that country are in prison uh, or in exile. And there are no political, uh, no constitutions which are designed without the mainstream input of political parties and leading political parties at that time. Uh, and in this case, parties had been banned. And in that constitution, assem constitution assembly, Museveni allocated two seats in that assembly for, for parties mm -hmm. and 10 for soldiers. Of course, we, the parties, we, we didn't take the seats. So basically, just a show and a joke. <laughs> and finally, that 1995 NRA constitution. Um, um, officially codified the ban on parties which Museveni had put in when they came in that uh, political parties uh, uh, um, uh, should not open branch offices, should not operate in existing branches, should not 
campaign for field candidates in public relations and political parties should not do anything that may be deemed to interfere with the movement political systems at the time. That's Article 269 of the original NRA Constitution. I, I checked the Constitution the other day. That Article 269 now reads something else. Yeah, but if you check on the original Constitution, that was the constitutional provision. So it was such an obnoxious thing to the citizens of the Republic of Uganda. So no way could it be something that is reflecting the people of Uganda. And next time you meet anybody in NRA, particularly Mr. Museveni, or anybody associated with them, ask them which group of Ugandans, because they claim it was a discussion, which group of Ugandans proposed that provision to be put there. Then you'll see that, well, it was not a people's <laughs> constitution. It was Mr. Museveni's thing. So for that reason, it is, that does not reflect, uh, the, the, it, it was not a people's constitution. And so for that, I don't recognize it. But granted, we are ruled under it. I, did not, I don't recognize Mr. Museveni, but um, I didn't, didn't support president. him. But he rules Uganda, and I, I was in Entebbe the other day, by the <laughs> way, and I did not throw any stone at his state house, but I know that's our building. <laughs> All right. There's just this last, uh, uh, the one I want to read, the only last mm. question. It's from Kaliango Musa Mutesa He says, mm. uh, Mr. Cheno, I so love your analysis based on facts answering question. Not as a politician, but as someone with evidence packed with facts. Thank you. It's like there's, there's a lot. There's, uh, You're very most, kind. most of the others are just appreciated. You're very kind. Thank of, you. Of mm. your time and, and all of this. But be, as we conclude today, uh, with uh, every all the situation as it stands, and, and where we are as a country, is it what 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 is it that we must focus on? I, I've heard you say a lot of times that um, this country is only going to get better and stable if the current administration leaves. But, uh, but they can surprise us. But, but even then, <laughs> even then what, what is it? Maybe just highlight on what us as citizens should be doing in this current situation as we stand. Mm. And that will be also coming with a conclusion. Yeah. Uh, no, I think um, I, I do not mind Mr. Museveni surprising us by uh, Building on the, the, his <laughs> his special letter to the, to the people of Bukedia <laughs> that will go and link up the letter of Saint Paul's and Saint John's <laughs> and Paul's to the Corinthians, <laughs> you know. And I'm told he's a he's a Christian. The other day he was challenging people go see them. <laughs> Sometimes yeah, yeah, a fantastic yeah. guy. Sometimes, look, um, no, I I believe that the best of this country is in the future. I believe that uh, the best for this country is possible and is in the future. I'm repeating, but mm. very deliberately. Yes. But I also believe and know that the future of this country uh, is in the hands of young people. Yeah. Uh, and that said, I also want to say that this country was built at independence by a predominantly young uh, government Obote was then 37. Most of his ministers were 20s. I think the minister who started uh, uh, Uganda Television then was 29 as a minister. Um, so generally young people. Mm. But they didn't exclude everyone else, well, some people. <laughs> so, meaning the, the, the engine and the power of young Ugandans. Um, but if this country was built from independence with thinking and deliberate and you know, and visionary Ugandans of the time, with limited access, as I said, some of these people had never flown, most of them. Some of them had never visited in Europe and North America. There were no mobile phones. Many of them walked barefoot until university and mm -hmm. colleges, if, that some, if some of them ever went to colleges. And they transformed this nation state. What about today? Um, so they did. So what I'm saying, Everything, and normally, normally say this country is possible. You know, that's always my slogan. If you mm -hmm. find in my, my, those of me who follow me on uh, uh, Twitter uh, 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 and Facebook and, uh, and, um, and, and uh, actually it's my it's a, a, a tag for, for my Skype, which is no longer a social media thing these days. Things mm -hmm. are moving very fast. Mm -hmm. So this country is possible. And I say this country is possible because we did amid difficulty in the past. So if we did so well in the past, why can't we do even much better in the future? Now, the question then is, what do we do? We are quite clearly under siege. Most young Ugandans must accept that what we have at the moment is abnormal. The Kaihura story is abnormal. Soroti's story is abnormal. Uh, Bukedia's story is abnormal. Loboa's story is abnormal. 
Pineta story is yeah. the, is a criminal. Yeah. Um, NSSF story is a criminal. Um, I can go on and on and on. I am trying to tell you, young citizens, mm. that no, there is no Pineti Loboa story that could emerge in the first Obote government and the minister will spend a week. There was never a state in which uh, you would uh, uh, think of some of the weepings, notwithstanding the challenges that we face. And I know I've said that something's reminded me. Every time you say that people talk about the, 19, the gold scandals, only one major thing was the gold scandals of 1966. Yes, as Museveni says, corruption leads to overthrow of governments possibly. That is true. Amin was sent to... Uh, uh, I'm, I'm trying to push away this was an example. I know yes. we're concluding. Mm -hmm. Amin was sent to support the liberation struggles in Congo. He got involved in gold deals. The CIA, as usual, of course, they, 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 because the, the CIA were, mm -hmm. were on the opposite side with us as UPC government, because we were effectively fighting them in Congo. They leaked this information to Uganda's opposition. <laughs> the thing came to parliament. Uh, it became a national scandal. Obote and uh, uh, being, uh, they tried to attire Obote to it. Obote was absorbed because Obote didn't know about it. In fact, Obote was very furious. Obote sent a mean on a mission, just like telling the, the, the Watafiris, you send them to Gun, mm. would liberate Congo, and then the Gun loot. And then after the looting, they, they, they give us a, 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 a burden, and they, you know, they, they give Uganda a bill, and instead of giving the bill to the, these guys who stole, <laughs> the bill comes to you, young Ugandans of the future. But so the point is, so the gold scandal was investigated, and Amin was found that, and Amin was going to be prosecuted. And he overreacted. Granted, it took a bit of time because that's another important question. Someone to say that, oh, why did it take such a long time? But at least it was formally gone through as a process. Mm. And, and so the answer. So point is, I'm trying to tell you, young Ugandans, it, it is completely wrong that you hear that one billion shillings has gone missing in NSSF. And you see, it's just watching. It is wrong for any young Ugandan, you know, um, to meet an NRA minister and not ask about iron sheets. It's wrong for, an N for a young Ugandan to call an NRA minister honorable, you know, and a tree maybe is even if it's a funeral coming to the same church to kneel for them. You know, I, you realize I'm, I am taking a slightly yeah. um, deliberate line here because I know NRA guys might say, Ocheno is asking for an uprising against NRA ministers. I have no apology because some of them are my friends. You see what I'm saying? No. And that when Mr. Museveni comes, Uganda should say, our oh, iron sheets. The other day there was a conversation on another network where a young Karamojan scholar, you know, was asking legislators from Karamoja to tear their membership to NRA until the issue of iron sheets and then the insecurity in Karamoja and then the underlying poverty issues in Karamoja is resolved. That is what you young Ugandans need to do. You need to do that without throwing stones. You need to do that without abusing people. You need to do that without breaking people's legs. You need to do that respectfully. You need to do that without turning that place is a place for taking weed and cigarettes. You need to do that by still going home and respecting your girlfriends and boyfriends. You need to do that by making sure that you don't cause traffic jam as a result of that. You will need to do that civilly. That's all that young guys need to do. But also in doing that, Young Ugandans read. Young Ugandans try and counter change <coughs> all the information in terms of the conversations I've had. You'll find the facts down there and you grow more. Young Ugandans reach out to me, as I said, on social media, about whatever way, and have a conversation. But most important, you young Ugandans, mobilize and organize and make it apparent that come 2024, that by this time 2024, Mr. Museveni knows that all of you guys have demanded you have your national IDs, you're registered to vote, you've got your opinion, you're not prepared to be bought, and you're prepared to say, I am not going to be bought be using my money, and you're prepared to say, no, I'm not going to be bought because the future belongs to me. Mm -hmm. And I'm not going to be bought, but instead I'm going to be part of the organization with the Ochenos and the Rogers and others to simply not say, look, the more together we are, the more we expose criminality and loot, the more we protect, and the more we become the exemplary young events. I am delighted by the Rogers, and, and I, I don't put on the spot. I have fantastic young guys that I nurture as leadership in UPC. 
Forget about guys in, in nature and in, uh, generally as leadership in Uganda. But the guys I do in UPC, I always tell them, I don't want you to abuse anybody in the name of UPC and in the name of the chairman. So I teach and train young people deliberate good manners. If a critical number of young Ugandans, and they don't have to be five million, but they don't even have to be a million in terms of leadership, mm. public opinion will change it. Mago fully changed Tanzania within three years. Pop. Even in death, Tanzania is actually like you know, the, the guy who, who found iron sheets in his compound. He would say when it comes to Uganda's economy, shh, <laughs> Tanzania has changed, <laughs> has has changed <laughs> completely. So all that young Ugandans, I'm saying this is a message specific for young guys. Young guys need to mobilize and organize. But for older Ugandans leading to my age and more, we should wake up to realize that we need to take responsibility and to, to leave this country in a better place than we found it. But to know, except for people who've le led priestly lives, <laughs> you know, that we have children and children's children for whom we need to live a responsible Uganda. But even for people who've led priestly lives, don't forget you've got nieces, cousins, and nephews. And how cheek, how irresponsible, how inhuman can you be that you deliberately want to leave a compound of your own homestead under fire simply because you know you're moving next door. That is criminal. This country is better. And because we got granted it for God and my country, I think if we committed ourselves to that, there's no reason why we don't have a much hope for Uganda post Museveni, including Mrs. Museveni and Museveni's children in it. All right. Thank you so much. I do not, I absolutely have nothing useful to add. I do not think there's any better, <laughs> any better wisdom I can add on that one. I think that is a good call. And uh, we want to thank you yet again for always spelling the time to come and share. I think you've had uh, some number of comments. There's more others I've not read about saying that you've, you've done a service every time now and again for appearing and sharing your, you. uh, this kind of stuff with us. Every single time, by the way, we learn a new thing every single thank time. You, thank you. So thank you so much. And, and for all of you folks, thank you so much for being with us for the two hours. And I don't take you for granted. I'm seeing other kids. You know, Kaliango, Norman, I'm uh, seeing mm -hmm. Ethan, I'm seeing Rita, I'm seeing Kakwenza, Richelawa, Sheja, who's joining us from German. I'm excellent, seeing excellent. a number of you, all of you folks, for being a part of us. Thank you so much. We do appreciate it. And we hope that we did learn one thing or two. Please do refer the video, send that link to another person so maybe they can learn a thing or two, just so that we can also grow collectively mm -hmm. and also mm -hmm. change this community for the better. So there's nothing more than that I have for you. Thank you so much. My name is Roger Sleab. Have yourselves a very good night. Alternative Dig Talk. Real issues. Real talk.